This is DRF, Race of the Day. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. The DRF Race of the Day for Saturday, September the 25th, is a good one and perhaps a very important prep for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Here's the field for the Grade 1 Pennsylvania Derby. $1 million is the purse. We are going a mile and an eighth, and as you can see, the nine Medina Spirit, who finished first in the Kentucky Derby this year, mired in controversy since then. He has already been withdrawn by trainer Bob Baffert. You can download free formulator pass performances for the Pennsylvania Derby on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them and handicap along with us. Mike, let's quickly throw up the Timeform US pace projector. With Medina Spirit out, visit timeformus.com when scratches are made official on Saturday. This pace projector will automatically update and will ha it will have Midnight Bourbon on the lead. Although Hot Rod Charlie is by no means a slow horse, I think Midnight Bourbon's got to go. His best running races have been when he makes the lead. Yeah, I'm assuming he'll go to the front. He, he was probably going to try to go to the front whether Medina Spirit was in here or not. Um, but he, he should certainly make the, the lead now. The question is, um, at least in my opinion, even if he does make the lead, um, do you really care? I mean, he got loose on the lead in the Travers last time. I realize it was a really it came back a fast race against essential quality. But um, I, Dan, I'm very, very skeptical of this horse, and I, I really don't want any part of him in this race. Now, a horse that's really going to be hoping for that red bar fast pace scenario to come true is one of the three deep closers that Timeform US has designated for this race. The one Folsom, who has won four of his last five starts, including the local prep. He has a race over the track. This is the grade three Smarty Jones stakes, and he was three to five for a reason. He laid over the field, and as we turn into the stretch, we see Folsom swinging to the outside. He was very wide and stayed in the clear, and he's just too much for this field. The buyer only came back in 84. Yeah, I mean, he just does what he has to do here. As you say, laid over this field on paper. He, um, he wins it clear at the end. He doesn't bury this field, Dan, but he's clear under the wire. It's a nice win for him. It doesn't come back fast. Luckily for him, if you like him, he does have a faster race than this, a much faster race than this three starts back in Kentucky. A true closer is the two. Keep me in mind. He likes to run from well off of the pace. He's only won once. That was a graded stakes race as a two-year-old, but it appears that ever since the blinkers have come on three starts back, he has found his best form. Now, he might have had his best chance at winning a race like this two back in the Jim Dandy, where he just got a great ground-saving trip while the winner essential quality went into the parking lot, and he still lost in a good effort. He's the kind of horse that needs a lot of help up front. Exactly. Um, and listen, he might very well have won that, Jim Dandy, if he was racing anybody else but Essential Quality. Um, but Essential Quality just would not let him get by in the stretch. He ran fine there with a great trip. Um, and I like the fact that he stayed a little closer that day, too, because, his, you know, his big problem so far has been he has no speed and he always has to try to pass the entire field. Um, he did stay closer in the Jim Dandy. He was not, you know, that far away in the Travers last time, although that was another slow paced race. I don't know. He just feels like he's really improved um, in his most recent start then. And I think he's a major player in this race. Talk about a wild card. The number three speaker's corner will only be making his fourth lifetime start. It's only his second race of the year, and it's his first race around two turns. You would think just off of that, it's way too much too soon against some of the best three-year-olds in the country. But it is Bill Mott, a very conservative trainer, throwing this horse into the deep end of the pool and he might have been very impressed off this big fig win on august the 14th sprinting this is speaker's corners first race off of an extremely long layoff i thought he sat a nice trip staying close to a moderate pace he split horses on the turn and he really gets away from them the last 16th of a mile the fig came back he is certainly bred to get a distance of ground he's by derby winner street sense i believe his second dam won the breeders cup distaff just a fascinating spot i will admit both of his wins have come with good setups. I mean, they have, but I think it's pretty clear that this horse has a lot of talent. You could tell last year that he was a talented horse, even though he only ran twice. Um, a super strong field he'd be breaking his maiden at Belmont Park in his second start. Um, and then he came back off the long layoff last time. I mean, you know, obviously things didn't go or couldn't have gone that well for him early this year. It was a very late start for him. He looked really good winning that race last time, Dan. Um, you know, we'll see what happens as they step him way up in class. He has bred to stretch out. He clearly has a lot of talent. I want to see what kind of price he is, too. Um, the 12 to 1 line looks pretty good. I wonder if you can, if you have any chance of getting that. 
Weyburn, the number four, is a graded stakes winner this year. He won the Gotham. Both of his wins have come around one turn. He's done good work around two, and I think he has enough tactical speed where he can tuck in behind the leaders. He likes to race close. The question is, when those classy horses start to kick away, will Weyburn be able to stay with them? He's run some good races. He has to prove he can do it against the best of the best. Yeah, I, that's kind of how I feel, too. I like him as a horse. I don't know if I like him in races like this necessarily. He does have that big, you know, Gotham win earlier this year where he pulled off the big upset. But, boy, you start looking at the horses that he beat that day and you start to wonder how good that race actually was. And, those, and this horse has come back and run fine several times. But, you know, he was no match in the Jim Dandy without an excuse um, last time. Even as Pegasus, we've talked about that race before. I personally don't think it was as close with Mandaloon as the final margin suggests. I mean, to me, when you watch that race, Mandaloon was hanging a little bit in there. Um, otherwise, this horse wasn't going to be as close as he was at the finish. The number five, I am redeemed. Pennsylvania bred has done little wrong in his career. He's three for four. The only loss, however, came the only time he faced open company. He did succeed around two turns last time out over a sloppy track. The figure was much improved, and he does appear to have some tactical speed, but it's a big class hike. It is. He's got some talent. Uh, there's no doubt about that. We'll see what he can do against this field because, unfortunately for him, this is a, a Pennsylvania Derby. They came up, you know, pretty solid. There's some good horses in here. Is Bourbonic the best pure closer in this race? He took advantage of a contested pace to win the Wood Memorial at a gigantic price. And let's be honest, he was placed in some very tough spots, the Derby and the Belmont after that. They ran him in the West Virginia Derby last time out. He fell far behind is what he's going to do. And he came for an even finish to be third. I was a little disappointed in that performance. I was a little surprised he didn't take more money than he did. But he's a horse that I guess always has a puncher's chance from the back. I mean, I guess he's just going to sit out and, and hope for a you know big pace in front of him. I guess you know Medina Spirit not showing up probably hurts him more than it hurts anybody else. Um, and I personally, Dan, I don't think he's the best closer in the race. I think keep me in mind is the best closer in the race. Um, we'll see. This horse is going to be a great price. If you like him, I'm not going to try to talk you off him, but I'm not a fan. Bourbonic's one of the top three-year-olds in the country. There's no doubt about that. Third in the Derby. What a wonderful second in the Belmont. Basically a race-long battle. And he was punching on at the end of that race. And then in the Haskell, of course, there was all the controversy with Midnight Bourbon, of course, uh, stumbling and falling. Hot Rod Charlie gamely held off Mandaloon in the wire, uh, but was disqualified. This is a horse who is the one to beat, and his tactical speed puts him in the mix when the real racing begins. Yeah, I mean, I guess he becomes the favorite now um, with Medina Spirit not showing up, um, although I suppose Midnight Bourbon um, could also take a lot of money in here. We'll see what happens. I just think this horse is good, Dan. He's going to get a good trip in this race. Um, I thought his derby was a, a nice performance. You you mentioned how good his Belmont was. I agree with all of that stuff. Um, and his Haskell, I just feel like he ran really well in the Haskell last time. Um, it's unfortunate for him that he was disqualified. It was probably the right call. Um, but he ran another good race. I just think this horse is really good. Um, and I actually think he's pretty close to essential quality at the top of this division right now. Midnight Bourbon, the number eight, is a horse that I think deserves a lot of credit for his toughness. He's run 11 times this year. His really only bad race this year came in the Derby, and that was a race. How bad was it? He had a lot of trouble in that race. You could easily draw a line through it. I thought he ran well in the Preakness. It was not a strong edition of the Preakness, but he and Medina Spirit were close to a fast pace, and he got the better of that horse. He fell down in the Haskell, and everyone was thinking the worst. And guess what? He bounced back and he ran this race in the Travers against two-year-old champion Essential Quality, the leader of the division, the Belmont Stakes winner. He got a great ride from Ricardo Santana, who got him loose on the backstretch through a moderate pace. Essential Quality hooks him and Essential Quality gets him. But Midnight Bourbon tried in the stretch here. He did. He tried very hard in there. He was never going to win. And there, to me, there was no point in the stretch. It ever looked like he was going to win. Uh, but he was very game here to be second best um, when all was said and done. Um, listen, he's obviously good and I don't want to, you know, sit here and, and knock him too hard. I personally, you know, am not a fan of this horse. I don't like him in here either. Um, I, even if he does make it to a, an early lead, like he did last time, um, you know, his last three starts, I guess, are the ones that you would want to talk about that to think he has some kind of chance to win here. I thought his Preakness, um, was a, you know, pretty mediocre performance overall, Dan. I, I know that pace was solid, but that was not a good field. You know, he gets run over by Rombauer in the stretch. I don't know. I, did, I thought if he was going to win a big one, he was going to win that one because Medina Spirit did nothing in there. 
Um, he wasn't winning the Haskell. I know that he got in trouble in the stretch, but he was a beaten horse when he clipped heels in there. He wasn't winning that race. And, you know, listen, I know essential quality is really good. This horse was absolutely loose in the Travers last time. So I'm going to take that 107 with a grain of salt. He's going to be a short price in here, and I don't want a nickel on Medina Spirit will scratch. He will point for the awesome again against older horses at Santa Anita. So we'll move to the 10 for Todd Pletcher, American Revolution. This is a New York bred that has been so impressive in his last few races, especially the two turn races. Let's watch his Albany at the mile and an eighth. He was just dominant in this race. He saved ground on the back stretch. He got outside uh, the Bob Baffert train runner, Bobby Bow, and he just grinds them down. And it just seems the more distance, the better for this son of constitution. The fig came back a respectable 98, Mike. I think this horse certainly has at least an outside chance at a very good price because he looks like he's coming into his own. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, I think I I feel like the favorites are pretty strong in here, but if you wanted to take a shot against them, I think the big price is this is the one that you want to take a shot against him with. Who knows how good he turns out to be? You know, he wasn't beating anything in that replay that we just watched, uh, but you could see how far back everybody else was in the stretch there. I mean, he fairly buried that field and it came back pretty fast. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Pennsylvania Derby. Hot Rod Charlie is the horse to beat. I want to try to find a price to beat him. I agree with a lot of the things Mike said about Midnight Bourbon. I think we only disagree about the Preakness. I thought he ran better than Mike did, but I agree in the Haskell. He would have been third, beaten about five lengths if he stayed on his feet. And in the Travers, essential quality was just better than he is. Uh, Hot Rod Charlie off a little bit of a two-month layoff. If this pace is fast, maybe he will be uh, susceptible to a closer. I'm just curious to see what we get from Speaker's Corner. They're throwing a lot at him. I agree. I almost put him on top, too. Um, I, I put him second to Hot Rod Charlie. I just feel like Hot Rod Charlie's and you know, maybe he's just in the right spot here, Dan. Um, he should get a good trip. I, I think he's a good horse. I'm going to stick with him on top in here, and I'll, I'll use Speaker's Corner as well. Um, again, I just want to see what kind of price he is. I think that's an excellent point because something tells me he might be kind of the buzz wise guy horse. And if he's half his 12 to one morning line, he probably isn't worth it considering all of the question marks surrounding him. But I do think he's good and I want to give him a shot. Three, eight, 10, six for me, seven, three, two, eight for Mike. It's the Pennsylvania Derby. It is a good one on Saturday. Good luck.